Massive collaborations are bringing about a fundamental shift in how science will be carried out. Science typically takes place in specialized labs by highly trained experts. But all this is changing. What if new forms of collaboration could change not what people are working on, but who else can participate? Let's take as an example a critical scientific problem, understanding protein shapes. Proteins are molecules that carry out many different functions that are fundamental to life. And how a protein does its job is entirely determined by its shape. Just as a key needs to be just the perfect shape to open a lock, the shape of a protein determines exactly how it works. And because proteins are essential for living things, understanding protein shapes is the key to understanding life. It turns out that experimental methods for determining protein shapes can be very costly and time-consuming, requiring specialized training and equipment. It would be really great if we could take what we do know about a protein and have computers calculate what shape that protein is going to take. Trying to figure out how to do that has been part of a very fruitful collaboration between biochemists and computer scientists, computational biology. Collaboration is an essential part of science. People with different backgrounds and perspectives coming together to share their ideas and think of new solutions to problems. So this is how it's been done in the past. Scientists turn to vast networks of interconnected computers. Projects like Folding at Home and Rosetta at Home use screensavers on people's home computers to search for different protein shapes. But even with all this computational power, finding the correct protein fold is very, very difficult. There are just too many shapes to search through to find the correct one. But then something interesting happened. People started watching the screensaver, and they could see how the computer was trying to fit the proteins together, and they felt like they could do better. So rather than adding more computers, which might add some more computational power towards solving the problem, we wanted to try a totally new approach by adding the power of people's minds. But how could we let people get involved in trying to solve this kind of scientific problem? Well, people are already spending lots of time playing video games, and normally they're just working on solving problems that were made up for the game. But what if we could use games as a means to put that problem solving and creativity towards solving real world problems and helping to advance science by combining the power of people's minds with the power of computers? What if instead of massively multiplayer online games, we could have massively multiplayer online science? So these questions inspired us to create the game Foldit. Foldit is a massively multiplayer online video game where players compete and collaborate to find well-folded protein structures. Protein folding is a perfect game for humans because it's all about finding the correct fold of a protein. And spatial reasoning is a skill that humans have, but computers are not very good at. Folded allows users all around the world to use these skills and apply them to the scientific process. Folded developers take specific protein-related problems that scientists are currently working on, and they present them as puzzles for the Folded players to play. The pl players interactively reshape the protein on their home computer. A better folded protein gets them a higher score and a higher ranking. The protein structures are then analyzed by the scientists. <laughs> They're analyzed by the scientists, and any necessary uh, adjustments are then made by the folded developers before sending the, the the next iteration of the puzzle out to the folded players. Thus far, over 250,000 people have played Folded. Many of the top players have little or no background in biochemistry, but the game has a series of introductory tutorial puzzles designed to teach the basic concepts of protein shapes so that anyone could get involved. You might just discover a skill you didn't know that you had. 
The players can develop domain expertise and, and actually form new scientific collaborations with each other. The game has a number of communication channels, such as chat and forums, so that more experienced players can help out newcomers. The players can form groups to work together and share their solutions with each other. And the game even has an embedded scripting language so that the players can actually codify and share their favorite strategies. So now that we've had this worldwide collaboration amongst Folded players, what have we been able to accomplish so far? Well, for over a decade, our experimental collaborators in Poland had been working on solving the crystal structure of monomeric Mazen-Pfizer monkey virus retroviral protease, a protein that causes AIDS in rhesus monkeys. Unfortunately, they had been unable to solve this structure using traditional methods, so they reached out to our lab to try out our latest computational approach using the massive distributed computing network. Unfortunately, that method also failed to solve the problem. So we turned to the Foldit players and gave it to them as a puzzle for three weeks. Amazingly, in just 10 days, the Foldit players were able to solve the structure of this protein. Three teammates in particular built off of each other's solutions and progressively refined the structure until it was good enough to fit the experimental data. Now, by knowing the accurate shape of this retroviral protease, scientists have a better chance of designing successful antiretroviral drugs. Our collaborators in Poland who had, looked, who had been searching for this solution for so long were so excited when it was finally solved that they asked us to simultaneously open bottles of champagne over Skype. But despite all this, the players who solved the structure of this protein insisted that we replace their names in the author list of any publication with the name of their Foldit group, Contenders. Rather than taking individual credit, they requested that their entire team be credited. And so we published the paper with the Foldit Contenders group as co-authors. In addition... <laughs> In addition to discovering the shapes of naturally occurring proteins, folded players can also help scientists to design new synthetic proteins that don't exist in nature. Take, for example, the Diels-Alder reaction. This is an organic chemistry reaction that's catalyzed by a protein enzyme interacting with a smaller molecule. For nearly a century, it's been a useful part of chemist toolset and could be applied to the development of synthetic drugs. The folded players and the scientists work together to come up with a new enzyme that, that catalyzes this reaction. The biochemists would start out by working on their own designs, and when they felt like they needed some more input or some new ideas, we could take where they were and give that to the folded players to work on. After the players had got to work on their own designs for a while, we could take what they had and give that back to the scientists for further refinement and testing in the lab, actually bringing the players' designs out of the game and into the real world. We went back and forth on this for several iterations until we ended up with a new enzyme that had many more interactions with the small molecule and was around 20 times more efficient than the enzyme that we started with. It was, in fact, such a drastic structural change from the enzyme that we started with that it might have initially been dismissed as impossible. But this is the power of massive collaboration. More minds means more creativity and more ideas that might not otherwise have been tried. This concept has recently been applied to the worldwide protein folding competition that's held every two years called CASP. Previously, it was every team for themselves. But this past summer, a handful of labs from around the world joined forces to create the WeFold team. For the first time in the 18-year history of CASP, competitors collaborated by sharing their predictions with one another. Not only did Foldit participate in this new collaborative effort by sharing the millions of solutions that the players generated with the rest of the WeFold participants, but Foldit players selected their own predictions for themselves as well. Previously, Scientists would filter through the many, many player-generated solutions and submit them to CASP on behalf of the Foldit players. But this year, 
three folded groups selected their own predictions themselves. In addition to this, they wrote up their own abstracts for CASP, describing their methodology for folding and selection. We're eagerly awaiting the CASP results next month, where we'll find out how the players compare to the scientists, as well as how useful the folded predictions were for the rest of the WeFold team. Games and other forms of collaboration with the public are only going to become a more important part of science in the future. Already, public participation in Galaxy Zoo is helping us to understand our universe, an iNaturalist, the world around us, and an iWire, our own neuroscience. Integrating games with science presents a lot of new and exciting questions. How can global collaboration through games help to advance more areas of science? How can we use games to help improve science awareness and education? And how can we actually empower the players to make games that are relevant to them? Answering these questions is going to take a lot of new ideas, but we can all work together, and we can all be a part of science. What will we be doing next? Thank you. Merci beaucoup.